This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. I Love a Mystery. A Carlton E. Morse audio novel featuring Jack, Doc, and Reggie, specialists in crime and adventure. Now following the Northwest Trail of a missing millionaire, a killer cougar, and the Phantom Castle. This is Fred Foy, introducing Jim Harmon's presentation of Les Tremaine and Tony Clay in an original Carlton Morse thriller, The Fear That Creeps Like a Cat. Five o'clock in the evening in a motor launch among the Pacific Northwest Islands, somewhere off the coast of Canada, Jack, Doc, and Reggie began this million-dollar manhunt in an attempt to find Alexander Archer. Yesterday morning, they were taken prisoners by the Cooper gang and transported across the border into Canada by horses. Last night, they rested at an isolated cabin with Richard Cooper, Linda Joyce, and five other members of the gang. All day today, their horseback trip continued until an hour ago, when they came down to the edge of the Pacific. Here, they were loaded into a launch, and for the last hour, they have been cruising through the innumerable uninhabited islands which mark this portion of the coastline. Oh, there, uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh, Linda, go up forward and see what Frankie wants. Sure, why not? We're getting close to our destination. Shortly now, and you'll be rid of these handcuffs. Yeah, but what's a worry me now is, if this here launch should get wrecked or something with us handcuffed to the rail... Oh, no danger of that, I assure you. Uh, just the same if it should happen. We're gone, Goslins, and no two ways about it. I say, the thing that interests me, I've never realized before how many islands there were off this part of the coast. We've passed so many, I've lost count. Oh, yes, hundreds of them, hundreds of them. They got white folks on them? Oh, dear me, no, no, no. Most of them uninhabited. Some have never known the presence of white men. Mr. Cooper. Well, Linda? Frankie says we're at extreme high tide. We can make it through the outer reef now if you're ready. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, what's he waiting for? For your orders. Oh, oh yes, of course, of course. Uh, tell him to go ahead. Hi, Frankie. Yeah, what's he say? Go ahead. Take us through as fast as possible. All right. Hold on to your hat. Here we go. What's he mean, here we go? We're going to cross the reef. It's quite rough for a few minutes. Unfortunately, your gentlemen out here on deck are going to get wet. What about you? Uh, Linda and I will go down into the cabin. And leave us three out here handcuffed through the rail? I'm afraid it's necessary. There's consideration for you. <laughs> Great, huh, Jack? If we're crossing a week... And that must be the island we're heading for over there. Ah, oh, yes, that's right. Another five minutes, and we'll be in. Come, Linda. It's beginning to get sloppy. See you boys after the flood. Huh? How do you like them apples? We're going to get a duckin', and we just got to stand here handcuffed to the rail and take it. Well, there's one thing. Yeah? What? We're apparently penetrating right into the heart of the Cooper Gang stronghold. We're penetrating in, all right. But are we going to be able to penetrate out again? I think you've got something there, Doc. That depends a lot on what we find on this island, I imagine. Just remember, we ain't the first folks to be brought on this island. And we got Cooper's word for us that nobody that's ever come here has ever left it. Hey, there's rocks are sticking out of the water. Look out. Here we go. Slap me in the face. Well, hand cut to the rail. At least we won't be walking over. Look out! Here we go again! Well, that's all. We're inside the reef. I say, notice how quickly the water grows calm again? 
we seem to be in a sort of a lagoon. Well, I don't mind telling you, I could wring out my clothes and start a good-sized ocean of my own. Yeah, we're all in the same fix there, Doc. What is there about me and water? Any of it in miles, and it either gets on me or I fall in it. Well, just the same. I prefer this to riding a horse. I say, don't even mention horses. From the seat of my pants to the top of my shoes, I'm one long blister. And if you think this here salt water is doing them blisters any good... <laughs> man, oh man, I feel like the seat of my pants is on fire. Listen, listen, you two. This may be the only chance we'll get to talk together at all. I say, you think they'll separate us? I don't know what'll happen when we get on the island. All I know is that Richard Cooper is a very dangerous man. And I want both of you to promise me to watch your step. Right out. Especially you, Doc. Everything you say antagonizes it. Just don't talk so much. Well, I'll try. I'd advise you to, for your own safety. But, Jack, what's it all about? Do you think Cooper's bringing us to this island has anything to do with our search for Alexander Archer? Yes, it's all tied together some way. In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Archer is on this island. Hey, then if we can escape from here with Archer, our job's done. Mm -hmm. That's great, Doc. Huh? What you mean? Here we are being brought to the island in handcuffs, and already you've not only got us free, but escaping with Archer. Well, ain't that the idea? You're the kind of an egg who turns back and looks at the answer before he's even read the problem. And another thing I'm wondering about. What you suppose Frenchie and Marie think about our disappearing from Port Forest? They probably think we've run out on I say, do you think they'll be worried and call the police? I hope that's what they'll do, but I doubt it. They don't know enough about what we're into. Well, they was hired by the insurance company to take us to Port Forest. Won't they report back that we disappeared right after we got there? I hope so. But Frenchy looked to me like a pretty irresponsible old codger. Watch it. Here comes Cooper. Oh, nice and dry. And here we are, wet as drowned rats. Now remember what I said, Doc. Hold your tongue. Well, gentlemen, well, you appear to have come through with no uh, ill effects. Yes, yes. The wetting was just what we needed to whet our appetite. Well, don't take that too seriously. Uh, Linda. Yes? Bring up that bottle of brandy out of the cabin. A drop of brandy will ward off the cold. Three or four minutes now and we'll have you out of this and into some dry clothes. Oh, still the good hoax. Oh, yes, I pride myself on it. Uh, I got my own opinion. Young man, I find your personality very distasteful. Oh, you do. Doc. Well, Dad, blast it. Jack. Shut up. Jack, I swear to my grandpa, if I don't... Doc. If you don't stop talking so much, I'll personally wring your neck. A most unfortunate young man. Just listening to his voice sets my nerves on edge. Well, you'd have a very unfortunate time of it in the state of Texas, then, I'm afraid. Is that what it is? It's... I say, Cooper, isn't your pilot taking a bit of a chance? What's that? Well, heading us straight for those rocks on the shoreline. He knows what he's doing. You wanted the bottle of brandy? Oh, Linda, yes. Uh, give each of them a drink. They find it a bit chilly. Say, you do look like well dunked donuts. Their hands are occupied. You'll have to hold it for them. Sure. Here, Doc. Looks like pretty dense forest on the island. Yes, yes, it's all heavily wooded. Mr. York? I say, thanks. Is that reef we crossed all around the island? Oh, yes, we're well protected from boats. Where we crossed is the only place a boat can get through, and then only at high tide. What do you mean, protected? Here, watch. You're going to see something very interesting in a moment. I asked what you meant. Protected. Oh, did I say that? <coughs> Thanks. My pleasure. I say, look what's happening. We're running right into the interior of the island. I thought that would surprise you. Well, when you look at that, a doggone river. Oh, not much of a river, but deep enough to take this launch inland quite a distance. Well, we're almost there now. Doggone, will you look at us? Chugging up a river with trees as tall as churches hanging right over it. I say, beautiful. Like it, huh? I certainly do. I've heard about the natural beauty of the Northwest, but Joe... <laughs> hey, what's that? Oh, that's Prometheus. I've got him locked up down in the cabin. You brought him along? Oh, yes. He knows we're almost home. I was hoping we'd left him behind. No, oh, no, no, not Prometheus. He's my right-hand man right here on the island. Right around the next curve is it. Is what? The landing pier. Is that what you mean, Linda? Why, why, yes, of course. <coughs> Jack, do you smell something queer? Yeah, I do. I've smelled it before. 
raw, wild. I say, mountain lions? Hey, you got mountain lions on this island, too? A few. Linda, tell Frankie to tie up at the lower dock. Frankie? Ahoy there. Tie up at the lower dock. All right. I get it. Right around the bend, gentlemen, is our destination. And here we go around. But this here mountain lion business... Mr. Long? Yeah? Isn't it obvious that the matter is closed? Maybe it's closed to you. Doc, for the love of Mike, where's your good sense, huh? Well, all right, have it your way. Here we are around the bend. I don't see nothing. I say, you don't see anything? Jack, will you look at that stone castle? A bit medieval. But we find it very comfortable. Tell Frank to cut the engines, Linda. Cut the engines, Frankie. Okay, all right. A great medieval castle in this out-of-the-world island? Uh, the story of how it got here is almost as amazing as the first sight of it. I must tell it to you sometime. Hey, that mountain line smells stronger than ever. Linda, tell Frank to come here. Frank, Mr. Cooper wants you. You better come and take the helm, then. All right. We're drifting in. Doc, I warned you. Huh? What's the matter? What do you want, Mr. Cooper? Put a gag in that man's mouth. Hey, listen. Ah, oh, shut up. Open up your mouth. What are you doing, Henri? Oh, I say. Yeah. yeah, that'll hold you. All right. Now jump up on the pier and tie us up. Yeah, and two shakes. Jack, did you ever see a more desolate pile of stone? It does look more like a jail than a house. It's impressive, though. There, there she is. Give me a hand, Mr. Cooper. As uh, soon as I'm up, bring up those three men. Listen to me. Oh, Linda. Humor him if you want to stay alive. Cooper? Yes. As long as he finds you entertaining, you're safe. What about Doc? I'm afraid there isn't any hope for him. I'm crazy even to talk to you. Watch out. Linda! Yes? Release Prometheus before you come up. All right. That's all. Be smart. Jack, what does she mean? Watch it. Here comes Frank. Say, will you tell that Linda woman to keep away from us? Ah, uh, what's the matter? Her smart cracks about us being dead men. Quite. What kind of a she thing is she, anyway? What do you care, pal? You'll be just as dead no matter what she says. Oh, you think so? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Got your gun on him, Mr. Cooper? Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead. All right. As soon as I unlock you from the rail, put your hands behind you, see? Yes. Uh, behind you now. You're next, Texas. Uh, behind you. Here comes Prometheus. Oh, come here, Prometheus. Heel, heel. All right, that's all of you. Hop up on the side. Go ahead, Pop. Gentlemen, we have arrived. From now on, you are my guests in the Phantom Castle. This castle sank into the ocean two centuries ago and no longer exists. <laughs> Adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie have come to you in I Love a Mystery. Created and written by Carlton E. Morse. Scripts copyrighted by Morsel Co. Incorporated. Produced and directed by story editor Jim Harmon. Featuring Les Tremaine as Jack Packard and Tony Clay as Doc Long. Consultants Frank Brzee and David Lloyd. Your announcer, Fred Foy. This presentation has come from Hollywood. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.